The most valuable feedback focuses on helping the student improve. Feedback is powerful when it reduces that gap between where the student is now and where he or she is meant to be. According to experts, there are at least three main questions a valuable feedback should, at least in part, answer to help the students navigate through their learning gap. The first question is, where am I going? Students, and actually teachers as well, have to know what are the goals, what are the learning objectives. They must be clear, precise, brief, but comprehensive. Everybody should know what, where to go. Second question is, how am I going? So, during the learning activity, we need to monitor what progress has been made towards the goal. Are we monitoring what we are doing? Do we need to modify anything? Are we using the right strategies for the right task? Third question is, where to next? What activities need to be undertaken to make a better progress? Is there any advice, suggestion, or a different approach to experiment that we teachers could give? As you can imagine, teachers and students need to work together on such a feedback. Both of them must be fully aligned in the process. The teacher has to be able to give the appropriate amount of guided instruction, sometimes even individually. We need to consider that these principles are very well applied in video games. These games monitor our performance, provide challenges a little above where we are, not too hard and not too easy, and then provide immediate, unequivocal feedback to allow us to reach the next level. As you know, many people spend hours in these games because they continuously give us the perception to have the right tools to tackle the new challenges. Imagine if there was no monitoring, no feedback, no calibration of the challenge, we'd stop engaging in these games quite soon. Giving a feedback following these three questions will provide the students with different cognitive approaches restructuring their understandings, confirming they are correct or not, indicating that more information is needed, or alternative strategies are possible to understand, memorize, and recall more efficiently. More practically speaking, we can direct an effective feedback towards at least three different dimensions of the learning experience. The first the feedback target can be about the product, the outcome of a given activity, such as after learning some new information or instructions or an application of a procedure. In this case, feedback is very useful and it is focused on data and students need to know what is correct or incorrect, particularly when the subject is totally new to them. This type of feedback is the most common in the classroom and most students see feedback in these terms all the time and not in any other more formative and less superficial way. In addition, when this type of feedback is addressed to the whole class, it may not be received by the students who need it the most, as many individuals do not consider the feedback concerning them. Having specific, individualized and correct information, however, is the platform on which building the other two dimensions of learning. The second level of the feedback is aimed at the processes used to create the product or complete a specific task. Such feedback can lead to alternative processing, reduction of cognitive load, it provides strategies for error detection, for seeking more information and experimenting with different study strategies. Feedback at this level appears to be more effective than at the product level for enhancing deeper learning and it should be provided as often as possible. The third type of feedback is more focused at the self-regulation level or the student's ability to monitor their learning processes. Feedback at this level can enhance a student's skills in self-evaluation, provide greater confidence to engage in studying and can enhance the desire to get feedback information. When students learn to self-monitor and self-regulate their learning, they will effectively seek and use feedback to reach their learning goals. Let's summarize what we can do using the following eight guidelines for a proper feedback proven to enhance learning. 
First, let's focus our feedback on the task and process, not the learner. Second, let's reduce uncertainty between the performance and the goals. We have to help the students to see where they are now and where they have to go. Third, let's provide elaborated feedback, describing the what, the how and the why. Fourth, let's present feedback in a specific and manageable message, trying to avoid any cognitive overload. Fifth, let's keep the feedback as simple as possible based on individual learner needs. Sixth, the feedback should be unbiased, as objective as possible, better if written and in a concise but comprehensive way. Seventh, let's promote a learning climate through the feedback, moving the focus from the pure performance to the learning process, where mistakes are more than welcome. Eighth, Let's provide the feedback after learners have tried to reach a solution. This will lead to a more self-regulation and development of metacognition.